Right now I'd like to look at a few different types of bucking techniques. Once the tree is on the ground, we've removed some of the brush, and now we have the trunk, and we need to cut it up. There's many different situations that occur. But first, before I do any cutting, I want to make sure that the trunk is, is fairly stable, that it, when I do make a cut, it's not going to roll over on top of me. Now, in this scenario right now, the butt of the trunk is still attached or sitting on top of the stump, and the top of the tree is, is under pressure down here. What that's done is that's created compression on the top of the trunk, and the bottom down here is under tension. Now, if I were to cut down, right down from the top with, with the bottom of my saw, it's very likely that the bar might get pinched. Therefore, I might want to think about coming and cutting from the bottom up. Now, in any case, when I do make this cut, this stump is going to want to, the trunk is going to want to drop down. So what I've done here is I've placed a, a piece of wood underneath so that it won't drop all the way to the ground. That'll make it a lot easier for me to make my next cut. Another little technique that I'd like to look at here, I'm going to use a wedge to actually help myself. I'm going to make my cut from the top down. Another thing that I want to pay a lot of attention to is always remember the reactive forces. Remember the pull and the push and that kickback zone. Make sure that I'm in a good stable cutting position with my thumb wrapped around the, the front bar and using my body to brace so that I can be, be in control of those reactive forces. Okay, so let's take a look. See, in this case, I was able to use the wedge and drive it down into the top of the, the trunk so that I was able to continue my cut straight down without it pinching the bar. Now I want to look at a couple of other bucking techniques where we have the log laying down on the ground. Now one of the things we really want to guard against is grounding the tip of the bar or any part of the chain into the ground, uh, which would dull it quickly. So I'm going to show two different techniques uh, whereby we can accomplish this. Over here, I'm going to make a, a cut down from the top, and then we'll be able to roll the log over and finish the cut from the top, cutting from the inside out. And over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down. This would be on a piece of wood, a log that may be too big for us to actually roll over. So I'm going to use the wedge again. I'm going to make the cut down, put the wedge in, and I'm going to actually drive the wedge in, and it'll actually lift the log up so that I'm able to finish the cut from the top down. Let's take a look. Another thing that I really want to be sure of is, is that I'm in a good, strong cutting position. When I'm cutting down here on a log that's on the ground, I don't want to be cutting from up top here, where it would be very likely for me to, to bury the tip into the, into the ground. I want to make sure that I'm in a low cutting position, a stable one. Notice here, when I came to finish the cut, how I was using my, my body to brace the saw because now I was dealing with that different reactive force. I was using the top of the bar, which would cause a push. It's going to want to push back towards me, but by using my body to brace me, I'm in a good, strong position. Okay, now let's look at this other technique.
you're able to see now, if I continue to drive this wedge, it'll lift the log actually right off the ground and I'll be able to finish my cut. Okay, now there I was able to use, use the wedge, so because this tree I wouldn't have been able to roll it over, I was able to use the wedge and cut all the way through without grounding into the, the saw into the ground. 